podcast and chill with Mac G was launched in 2018. The first episode of the podcast released in July of 2018. 200 plus episodes have since been released with more and more chillers tuning in from around the world. Our producer Tapela Moela had a conversation with him on the podcast and the first question she asked was what drew him to broadcasting? This is what he had to say. First of all, thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Uh, yeah, you're taking me way back. Uh, I just remember like watching uh, Yo! TV. I think it was like, um, who's Brian was on and Shade were on. And I'm like, wow, this looks so cool. I want to do this. And then I just heard that um, there was a new TV station coming, uh, ETV. And their offices were in Santon. So I caught a taxi, went to Santon, got to the uh, headquarters there. And I was like, hey, I want to be a presenter. And then, yeah, from that day on, they took me to Red Pepper, uh, trained me, and yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> and you gradually moved on to your radio career. Yeah. What launched that? Uh, I think it's passion more than anything, because mm -hmm. uh, growing up, I always liked music. And then the first time I listened to IFM, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, this is what, what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then I just sort of like, you know, um, started listening to it and... Um, making connections with people that work at the station. I remember the first guy I met from YFM was Adil. Uh, I don't know if you remember Adil, but he used to do Club Y back in the days. So yeah, I just linked up with him and started getting into the, into the swing of things. And then fast forward to where you are now, which is your podcast and show with Mac G, obviously. Yeah. What launched that? What inspired the idea? Uh, so it wasn't something that I like woke up and like, yo, let me do this. You know, it's mm -hmm. something that I had to do t for survival, you know, because um, I, I was let go at um, at nine four seven. I'd been working there for six years. So they decided not to renew my contract. And at the time, you know, I just had a kid and, uh, you know, I need to support my family. So I was like, what can I do? Then I was like, right, let me start this podcasting thing. And then that's when I started my first show. And then within three months, it became a monster. So I was like, oh, okay, cool, let me stick to this. Because my initial plan was to do podcasting uh, mm -hmm. until the next uh, radio fiscal. You know, so, because, you know, w with radio, if you're out of sight, you're out of mind, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me keep busy until April, and hopefully a radio station will pick me up. But by the time it hit November, September, October, somewhere there, the podcast was, was growing. And I was like, hey, you know what, let me focus on this. There might be something here. And here we are. And I remember you mentioning how the DJs in the interviews. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you have a plan then? Was the plan to introduce more celebrity interviews or were you just going with the flow? The plan was to introduce, um, to interview celebrities so they can, so that people can be aware of the podcast, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because um, if you check the Monday show, it's more like, you know, what I'll do on radio. It's more like a radio show. So I was like, okay, cool. How will I get people to know about the channel and know about the show? I was like, I, you know what? Let me interview uh, celebrities and they'll bring attention to the to the channel. And then people will then check out, you know, the, the, the stuff that we really want to do, which is the Monday stuff, you know? Uh, and then at the time, obviously, you know, like having been friends with all these celebrities, it was easy to call up Zintle. And yeah, before Zintle, w w the, the channel wasn't doing that great. <laughs> <laughs> no one knew about the podcast. It was just family, friends, you know, and a few chillers here and there. Uh, but I remember she took the interview we did. She put a link on Instagram with a swipe up thing. And then from there, like, yo, the, 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 the channel grew tremendously because she's got a huge following, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she, she, she put us on the map, I'd say. Okay. And you started out with Lynn and the ghost lady. Yeah. And now how many people are you hiring? Uh, right now, we've got about 30 people, 30 young black people that have employed, you know, uh, which is great because, you know, during these COVID times, it's tough. Uh, but yeah, we're a young company, young people, young professionals, and we're looking at about 30 plus people that have employed now. Okay, you mentioned just a few minutes ago that you have a few other uh, episodes within the channel. Yeah. I know you have recently launched, is it City Girls? Yeah, City Girls with Devo Ko, Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about the different episodes that you have underneath the podcast and what makes each special? Yeah, so we, we, we it started off as just Podcast and Chill, which was just my podcast. And then now we've since evolved and made it a network. Uh, 
So under the network, we have a podcast and ride, which is a car show with Nuck Music, uh, Noctula, and as well as Entle. Uh, and then we've also just launched um, um, City Girls with Tewukho Tobajane. And there's other shows in the pipeline that are coming. We've also got Chillers Club, which is for DJs, Black Friday to promote black business, uh, The Hangout to promote upcoming artists. Mm-hmm. So it's all different shows under one network, and the aim is to grow them and, and, and make them you know as big as they can be, you know? Um, and um, the reasoning is that it's always like energies, you know? Because mm-hmm. uh, I remember when I met Tewoko Tavajan, she's like, yo, I'd like to do my podcast with you guys, you know? Because we have the infrastructure, we have the people and the know-how and the capabilities right now. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, cool, what do you want to do? And she was like, yeah, I'm thinking of doing City Girls, you know, which is about nightlife and entertainment and all that stuff. I was like, okay, cool, that's dope. So we always try to do things that we are not doing, you know? So, for example, we can't do myself and Saul can't do a City Girls <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we know nothing about that, you know. Yeah. Uh, also, we're not into cars, so we can't do a car podcast, you know. Mm-hmm. But you have Nak and Noctula and Entle who love cars, you know. So, uh, if it makes sense to the network and we really believe in the show, then we'll put it up. And what happened to the queer life with Bougie? I think you guys were the only uh, podcast in, in South Africa that was heading an LGBTQI yeah. show. So what happened to that? Yeah, so that's another show that was under the network and still is under the network. Um, what happened is uh, prior to the incident with Boiti, mm-hmm. uh, the, the two weeks or week before, the show was on uh, production break mm-hmm. and we're planning to bring it back um, I think uh, towards the end of November, somewhere there. So the show was on production break, and then unfortunately that incident happened. So we had to take an internal decision and uh, put the show on hold, based on you know what the outcome will be, um, you know what the law will decide. So right now the show is on a break until we find out from the court what you know the proceedings will be, and then from there we'll take a decision. Yeah. Okay. And how challenging is it for you? I mean, you're a creative to, to wear the creative hat and being the executive producer of your own podcast and, yeah. and also being the boss of the whole network. Yeah. In the beginning, it was quite, um, it was quite challenging because I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not um, uh, a CEO, you know, I'm a creative, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't really know how to um, do those duties, but I've kind of like had to learn on the job, on the, on the way, you know? Uh, but now we've got a well more established um, system in the company, so I don't have to worry too much about uh, company stuff and business stuff. There's people that do that, you know, for the network. So I can just carry my creative hat and produce magic every single Monday or every single episode that we shoot. So right now I think we've got a structure that enables me to just focus on the creative side and let the other guys who are well versed in the business world to deal with the business. You yeah. mentioned Saul quite a lot in the interview. Talk to us about his contribution to the podcast. Yeah, I mean, Saul is amazing. If anyone uh, uh, watches a podcast, they know how amazing he is, you know. And it's it's great to work with like-minded people that have the same vision mm-hmm. and same passion. You know, we both have a passion for broadcasting. Uh, we both have a passion for what we do. And when we get together, it's magic, you know. Um and, and and I'm really glad that he, he, he became a part of the team because uh, since he has uh, come on the team, it has elevated the podcast. It has elevated everybody around us, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm talking about like crew, um, even the ghost lady. Like we've had to up our game because he raised the bar, you know, which is amazing. Yeah. And most people would say that you're controversial, right? Yeah. So how do you go about looking for a sponsor that will support your ideas and your vision? Yeah. Uh, I think all the sponsors that we work with pretty much know what we are all about now. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's not like in the beginning where, um, you know, people weren't too sure what we're about and, you know, what we can offer brands and and our sponsors. But right now, every sponsor that we work with knows that, you know, um, uh, we are topic of discussion mostly on social media, like every week or at any time, you know. So they know, and they know who they partnering with, you know, mm-hmm. uh, which is what we we appreciate and we love with the with the sponsors that we work with. They get us, they understand us, and they're ready to die with us, you know. 
And how do you shy away from all that social media negativity? I mean, you're hardly on social media, but I'm sure it does affect you one way or another. No, not at all. Like, I'm, I'm never on social media, funny enough. I'm never on it. Like, <laughs> I'll get screenshots from, like, friends, uh, and they'll say, hey, you're trending because of this, and they'll send me a screenshot or something. Uh, but other than that, I'm not on social media. Uh, I just like to protect my energy, you know? Uh, the only comments I read are from YouTube, which is from the chillers, you know? Because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I work for the chillers. They are my... Um, they are my sponsors, you know, so I have to make sure that they are happy. So I read comments on YouTube, but anywhere else, I, I really, I really don't uh, participate in that. Like, I mean, uh, even the first time we're trending with the whole controversy about the um, community, mm. I still don't know what people were saying. <laughs> I still don't know what people were saying in those tweets. And that's just how I protect my energy and just block out the noise. Okay, you also won an award for the best podcast of your year at the Global Media and Entertainment Awards. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel great because it means the, 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 the industry is growing, you know. And that's what we want because when we started, there wasn't much of a podcast industry. I mean, I think it was just Gareth Cliff who was podcasting, you know. Uh, but yeah, when, when, when awards like this happen and shows like this happen, um, it just shows that the, the, the industry is growing. And the more it grows, the better it is for everyone reading a few tweets just yeah. the other day about what makes people open up to you. I mean, yeah. your podcast, people would come here and they'd speak things that they've never said at an ordinary interview with the ACBC or any other media house. What yeah. is it about MECG that you find that people are more open to or rather would like to share on your podcast? Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I think for me, it's um, it's like... I'll talk, I'll talk on my behalf, right? So I don't know about the celebrities, how, why they get to open up. But for me, I think also the platform helps because it's not scripted. Like literally everything that we talk about is not scripted. It's a general conversation that you'd have with a normal person. And I think that's what I try to do. I try to speak to the person, not the celebrity. So, you know, obviously celebrities have a facade and a image that they portray out there to the public. But when we chill together on an interview on Podcast and Chill, that image is cast away. And I want to get to know the person, who they are, you know, what makes them tick, you know, why they do what it is that they do. And I think from that curiosity, curiosity comes uh, the, 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 the stuff they would say on not just on a normal episode, you know. I think I think for me that 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 that's probably a, a huge factor. Because uh, it's it's chilled, man. It's like two friends talking, you know, catching up mm. vibe, you know. And also, uh, our setup is very chilled. The team, the crew is very chilled. And, yeah, we don't take ourselves too seriously, you know. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it's just about having an honest conversation with, like, like you would with any other human being. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how's the music career going? Hey, man, do you even <laughs> want to call it a career? <laughs> <laughs> so what should we call it? Uh, yeah, no, like, Let, yeah, like, I, I, I do it. I love music, you know. I do it as a hobby, you know. But it's not like my uh, uh, be, be be all and end all. I just literally like music, and I can make music. So I was like, ah, you know, why not release? And even DJing, like, it's a hobby for me, you know. I'm not like I don't want to be the best DJ in the world, you know. Uh, I just like music. I like playing. Uh, so it's something that I do on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, people are loving the song. I was playing in Cape Town the other day and they were singing along to Rufun. I was like, what? People know Rufun. So it's amazing. But yeah, I'm a podcaster. I'm a broadcaster. That's what I want to be known as. And then all those other things are just stuff that I like doing, you know? Mm. Yeah. And gin, why did you decide to venture into alcohol? Specifically gin. Uh, I, I wanted, uh, when I was let go from, from 947, I was like, you know what? This industry is like so fickle, you know? One day you can buy a house with a pool, the next day you can't afford the pool cleaner, you know. So I was like, I need something more sustainable. So irregardless of how my career pans out, um, you know, I'll have uh, a legacy, you know, that I can even live for my kids and stuff, you know. Um, and I was like, what do I like? I'm like, I like drinking, man. <laughs> so let me just make my own alcohol, you know. And that's how the gin came about. And it's growing. Uh, people are loving it. They're supporting it. Uh, you know, uh, it's available on Take A Lot and some uh, stores in, in some tops is around Gauteng. But yeah, we're looking for a distribution deal because there's a huge demand from uh, chillers across the country who are 
uh, looking for grandeur, you know. But yeah, that's how it came about. Literally, it was just me saying I need something that I own that no one can take away from me and I can leave for my kids. And where did you...